but yeah, hey, Paul, um, I guess the big news today was Aman's left the club and you've, you've had to sign a replacement centre back. So can you sort of tell us what you can about yeah, what's transpired for, for her to have to leave after two weeks? Yeah, um, I can do my best for you guys. Um, um, apologies if the internet is a bit in and out. We're having to sort of hop. If, uh, if I'll come back and talk again. Um, but in, in terms of We got to New Zealand, um, and unfortunately, just um, some personal things and uh, and things that are tough in terms of for her. Um, so it meant that she's kind of had to go back to to her native Canada, uh, which is a real shame, uh, obviously. Um, so yeah, um, didn't quite work out how we wanted it to, um, but I'd say both parties, Amain and the club, um, worked very hard to find a really good solution for everyone. Um, so. The, uh, that's enabled us to have a very small window to bring in um, Olivia Kelly um, today. Um, so that's uh, from a squad point of view, obviously it's a bit, bit disappointing to lose a centre-back, but we've been able to replace one um, with that announcement this morning. So um, we managed to get that done in time for the window, which is good. Um, are you going to clarify, did she ever get to train with the team? And I take it she never made it to Australia. No, she didn't get the. She didn't get to Australia with the team. Um, she did, um, I think, two training sessions with the team in Wellington. Um, that week, uh, she had COVID, so uh, I wasn't um, around for for some of them. But um, yeah, there was a there was a small amount of of training done, um, but um, obviously not enough to to get her involved in the squad. How much of a blow is it to lose her? Obviously, you've been able to find a replacement, but um, you know she had a lot of experience, and you were signing a player that has never played professional football. Is there um, is it still a, a loss there? You know, given her experience. Yeah, I guess we'll never kind of really know. Um, it's one of those things where, at this time of year, the markets are are a lot smaller in terms of what's available. The whole European season's kind of started and it's a few months in. So you're really only looking at the American market, which is finishing up with NWSL. Um, but because of the contract cycles, they go through to the end of December. So to get someone out of contracts before our window shuts on the 25th of November is very tough. So, um, yeah, I think... We actually, we did um, a huge kind of dive into who was available. We had about 30 players presented to us um, and Olivia was one of the top three that we were really keen at looking at. And so we explored these three a lot more and, and she ended up being the one that we decided to to go with. So, yeah, we still went through a pretty extensive process um, to get her here and believe she's somebody that can really step up to the A-League. And we've seen in previous seasons, not just with us, with like Isabel Cox last year coming out of college, but also others around the league that they can be really successful when they come here. So that's the plan. Yeah, just a final one from me. Um, obviously, it's been three defeats, and I know you've spoken positively about the way that the team's playing. You think the first win's not too far away. But how disruptive is all this? You know, I guess ideally you would have wanted all five on ports probably starting by by round one. But um, do you feel like, you know, all this, you have on the back foot a wee bit? Yeah, I mean, I think... These early weeks of the season, you can kind of see it in the nature of the performances, the score lines. Um, all the teams are still really trying to find their feet. Um, the teams that have kind of been able to keep the most consistency with their squad, um, a victory, um, are benefiting from that a lot. And I think other teams are still trying to kind of piece together all their new players. There's been a lot of transition across the league with players coming in and out. So we're kind of going through that process ourselves, just trying to find our best balance. And so, yeah, you do want all your players available for you. And so um, it's a little bit disruptive, but I don't think it's really affected the team's performances on the pitch Um so, yeah, it's definitely not any reason why um, we're performing how we are. Um, that's that's purely down to kind of us and, and the players on the pitch. Kind of extra visa players has, has really had a huge impact on performances to date. Um, but without a doubt, having someone else come in next week will, will be a big boost for us as well. Cool. Thank you. No worries. I'll jump in. Okay, I'll play from Mr. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to be a bit of a pain. Your first answer to Phil's okay. question about what transpired, um, I like your internet cut out for a large part of that. Do you mind just? I know you can't say like you said you can't say heaps, but do you mind just um, reiterating what you, what you said there in that first answer? Yeah, sure. Um, it's it's really a personal reasons type scenario. Um, it's it happens in football. It's unfortunate. Um, that we weren't able to move forward how we wanted to. And there's a certain degree of privacy that we have to respect in terms of Aman as well. Um, you know, she's uh, she's somebody that been, we were just getting to know her and we, through this process with her, we're just conscious that we wanted to do the right thing by her and by the club as well. So it's just trying to get a, a situation where that could happen. So that's, that's why we got to that mutual termination. Um, enables her to to head back home and also enabled us to get, I guess, uh, an, I think it was an eight, nine day window from that point to, before the deadline shut to be able to try and get someone else in. So it was uh, it was also really helpful from our perspective to be able to do that because obviously once that deadline passes, then you can't replace her. So um, it had to be done pretty quickly. And so, um, yeah, I'm grateful to everyone at the club and to Aman for, and her agent for uh, working through it in a really professional way. Was it something that you could have foreseen before? Or is it just a personal thing that's come up kind of out of the way? Yeah, yeah, no, I don't think there's anything we could have foreseen or right. uh, or yeah. done anything yeah. differently. Um, it's just one of those things where we have to sort of respect that and and just, um, yeah, be able to move forward. So it's a shame, um, a real shame that it didn't work out. Um, but I guess now the focus turns on Olivia and and getting her into the environment as quickly as possible and bedding her into the team and um, and helping the team now get um, more positive results on the pitch. And just on uh, Olivia, um, you, you touched on her a little bit, but has she been someone that has been on your radar at any point or was it just like, you, I know you said it's a difficult time even with those uh, players coming out of the US, but was she, has she been someone that's come across your desk at any point? Yes, she has in the past, um, not in this off-season window, but previously to that, um, she's pretty highly regarded in her work at New Hampshire. Um, I think she was um, put down as one of the defenders to watch uh, for 2024 out of the whole NCAA programme. So she's somebody that's kind of been on our radar, so to speak. Um, and then, as I said before, with uh, the situation and the window and the kind of the markets, I guess, that are available to us, um, we just thought this would be a really good opportunity. So we went back and delved through footage, got lots of good references, um, talked to her, of course, uh, and, yeah, felt that she was a really good fit for what we needed. And, um, yeah, I think we've we've started to get a little bit more experience now, which is really good in terms of that US college market and seeing those players come into the A-League and be able to thrive out of that market. And I'm quite happy because I, I thought that market was going to really dry up with the emergence there. And, and most of those college kids would just go straight into that. But we're still seeing um, one or two kind of want to try overseas and, and get their first professional experience overseas which is helpful for the A-League because I still think we're going to get good quality people come out of that program we've sort of seen through Maya McCutcheon um, the potential of the players that come out so I'm excited about her coming Awesome, thank you mate, all the best tomorrow night Can everyone hear me alright? No all good? Good day, yes. good day, Paul. Um, I, I was just all wondering good. whether or not you could um talk us through the the timeline of um when you actually found out about Aman and how how little time you've had to to find a replacement. Yeah, it was pretty quick. Um, I'd say probably almost straight after the Canberra home game is probably when we when we found out, or the the day after. Um, and then obviously we kind of had that week of training and then we left on the on the Friday to go to Newcastle. So we kind of had two or three days together as a team office, like everyone behind the scenes and um, and came up with some potential solutions. And then once we were traveling on the road, then then we've kind of been communicating uh, back to head office about it. So. Yeah, we spent a bit of time in Newcastle working through it um, off the pitch, away from the games. And um, and likewise, since we've got to Sydney, um, just finishing up the 
final touches around Olivia coming in. So in a way, it's been positive in the sense that like we've got all our staff here together 24 seven and we're in camp. So we're able to kind of get through quite a lot more work in terms of uh, putting the process together around Olivia coming in and going through the footage and medical and everything else that's needed. So um, that kind of helped that we were all together. Um, but yeah, it's been a pretty busy few days while still trying to obviously review the game and prepare the team for for the game tomorrow night. Yeah, I mean, how is the team feeling? <laughs> Obviously, this has been, you know, quite disruptive and you've you've said that it hasn't been too bad, but but what are spirits like within the team at this point? Yeah, I think spirits are still pretty good. They're very disappointed that the results haven't been going their way. I think the first two games they were really disappointed that they felt they deserved something from the game, which I've kind of said after each game as well. I think the performances were good enough to get some points from those games, but um, it was really just that um, killer instinct in the box. And I think that's something that we've highlighted and reviewed and been working on this week um, over here in Sydney. Um, but the spirit overall within the team is actually still really good. They're getting on great. There's a good atmosphere. Um, Again, I think it's actually been good timing to have this trip together um, because when you're in camp and you're together and you're kind of eating together and all those things, it just brings that kind of bond. Um, and so they've been great off the pitch. We've been doing workshops every night. We've been doing team meetings um, during the days and training in the morning. So it's been pretty busy for everyone, but I think we're getting through a lot of content and and working through what we need to improve on. So I feel we're in a in a good space. I don't think the situation with a player going out and player going in has really affected them massively they've just kind of let the staff get on with that and and we just updated them um this morning on everything so um yeah I think I think they're in a pretty good place and but it's like anything Jenny like we just need that first elusive win and get that uh get that one to drop and and the whole world sort of feels a bit different right so um yeah uh, we're trying not to let it kind of get too much on top of us and just keep focused on the performances yeah, I mean, how how are you feeling? Are you feeling positive that you can turn things around and how, how will Olivia play into that? Yeah, well, I think at the moment, um, depth in the defensive ranks is being kind of pushed to its limits. Um, you know, we started the season with three fit centre-backs that started the first two games. Uh, and obviously with the news that Rebecca's kind of out for the season with an injury means that we're down to two senior players and young Ellen McMillan as an academy player. So we're kind of, we've got two senior players and a, and a kind of rookie, so to speak. So bringing Olivia in is massive because it just gives us a little bit more defensive options and solidity around the squad. Cause if anything was to happen to Mac or Tiana at this point in time, then obviously we start our stocks get quite low. We've seen Maya play at centre back and do very well in in the time she's played there, but she's primarily brought, been brought into playing midfield. So, um, if you move Maya back, it then affects the the midfield dynamic. So, bringing the livery in is key just for squad depth and and helping keep that kind of comp healthy competition for players um, in that centre back spots. And I think it will give the team a real big boost. And um, yeah, from the profile of her, she's very athletic and very strong quick good in the air and I think like the league needs defenders like that because it can be quite transitional and so you need defenders to be in that mold so um yeah we're excited that she's coming in I think it will add a lot of value to the team awesome that's it from me thank you Paul can I just check no too how's um Anna Lee going is she um how's her face and is she any chance of, of featuring tomorrow uh yeah she has a chance of featuring tomorrow um yeah, she looks like a middleweight boxer. I think there's the the big kind of black eye, and uh, there was there's been a lot of swelling over the last few days, which has gone down dramatically. She was out on the pitch yesterday with the team and training, so that's really good. Um, she feels great. I don't think there's anything really there apart from obviously just the soreness and the the bruising component, um, being cleared of concussion, being cleared of any fractures. So no danger um, to her playing. So really it's just a conversation um, after training today um, between me and her just to talk about um, how she feels about it and a safety component and just 
making sure she's comfortable and and if she's comfortable and um and we're happy that it's the right thing to do then she can definitely be available for selection yeah you haven't found a mask for her to, to wear <laughs> there is an outlet mall down the road i know they've been going there a bit but uh i don't know if any of them have found a mask um we we're it's something that we're like definitely exploring you know one of those like uh, hard case zorro masks that you see um so yeah again it's one of those things it can potentially help but then we don't want it to be more uncomfortable for her so um just exploring all the options really um but look considering where we were at when she come off the pitch and and obviously the initial reaction to the injury and the sideline the doctor's kind of reaction there was a lot of concern for her so to get to this point um a few days later where she's really good and happy and and buzzing around the camp and out there training is pretty incredible so um yeah we're happy that she's that she's available to us so yeah that's a very very positive thing awesome thank you no worries and paul just a question also on on adelaide what have you made of them so far and, and how do you get a result against them tomorrow night yeah look, they've done well i think they've started the season very well and um had two good wins um and been scoring like pretty well in in all the games i think they've scored twice in every game so yeah they've they've started the season well pretty similar to what i said against newcastle really i think they're a team that's uh, wanting to try and play out from the back and play passing football through the thirds they've got some threats in uh in Wurtz and condon and and healy um i think they're all attacking trio can can cause you problems so yeah, they're uh, they've started the season well. They're going to be a good team. Um, I think they play a nice style of football. So, yeah, where the where the heat on Sunday really kind of hampered the game and and stopped kind of I think two good teams going at each other. I think um, Friday night might be a little bit more like what I was expecting on Sunday, where uh, where we'll see that kind of more tactical battle and and two teams going after each other. So should be entertaining and and uh, exciting. And yeah, for us, we really want to get back to being um what we what we're all about and and uh, friday night gives us that opportunity so um, we're looking forward to the game